name is Chris Jacks, and today we are going to be doing a close reading of a letter from Abraham Lincoln to Richard Oglesby. Richard Oglesby is a friend of Abraham Lincoln's. Uh, when Abraham Lincoln is uh, shot at Ford's Theater in 1865, uh, that previous afternoon, uh, he had spent time with Richard Oglesby. Additionally, Richard Oglesby is very influential in the election of 1860. Uh, he runs the state convention that ends up nominating Lincoln, and he comes up with the idea of the rail candidate for president, um, which is one of the most popular images of Lincoln and is probably the most popular image of Lincoln on the East Coast in the election of 1860. So Oglesby is a friend of Abraham Lincoln's. But before their relationship becomes very close personally and politically, Lincoln writes a letter to Richard Oglesby in September of 1854, and this is the first known correspondence between the two. September of 1854 is a unique time period for Lincoln. Lincoln had made the decision to do almost no legal work and to devote his time instead uh, to manage the re-election campaign of Richard Yates, who is his congressman and also a fellow Whig. Yates was younger than Lincoln, both politically and in age, uh, but Yates is important to Lincoln for a couple of reasons. First, he wins the, re the, he wins the congressional district uh, for the Whig Party, which is the one that Lincoln had lost. Uh, also, Yates is the, one of the first congressmen to speak out directly against the Kansas-Nebraska Act in March of 1854. And that's one of the key things that brings Lincoln to Yates. Yates had actually wanted to retire from politics, or at least from his congressional seat, and not run for re-election in 1854, but is convinced by Abraham Lincoln uh, to fight for re-election. Lincoln's argument for him is, is because they could use the election campaign to fight the Kansas-Nebraska Act. The Kansas-Nebraska Act had changed the political landscape in Illinois and the nation as a whole in 1854. Um, the elections in Illinois during eight, in 1854 were now divided by pro-Nebraska forces and anti-Nebraska forces, rather than as much by specific party lines, such as Whig and Democrat. Even Stephen Douglas, who is the Illinois senator most closely associated with the Kansas-Nebraska Act, considered the elections in Illinois in 1854 to be a direct sign of the people's assessment of the Nebraska Act whether they liked it or they didn't. And it's under these circumstances that Lincoln begins his letter to Richard Oglesby. The letter. Dear Sir, you perhaps know how anxious I am for Yates's re-election in this district. The key word in the sentence is anxious. Yates's re-election was very uncertain and Lincoln was aware that Yates, uh, it was up in the air. And so that because, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Yates had failed to provide adequate patronage to his supporters and thus lost some of them. Um, Yates had also been accused of being a know-nothing, which lost some supporters that were foreign-born. Additionally, Yates lost some foreign-born voters because he was associated with the temperance movement through the Whig Party, which is kind of ironic, as you'll find in this letter. So Lincoln had adequate reason to be anxious about Yates's hopes for re-election. So Lincoln goes on in the letter. I understand his enemies are getting up a charge against him, that while he passes for a temperate man, he is in the habit of drinking secretly, and that they calculate on proving an instance of the charge by you, if indeed you, Oglesby, have told them anything, I cannot help thinking they have misunderstood what you did tell them. Uh, the truth of the matter, Yates was a drinker. Um, so much so that when he was inaugurated as governor in 1861, uh, he was drunk. And that Oglesby actually probably knew that Yates was a drinker, because Oglesby was a rising Whig, and he himself was also a drinker, and so there's a good chance that both Oglesby and Yates had shared drinks together. So then knowing this, why does Lincoln question if Oglesby perhaps has been misunderstood. Back to the letter. Other things being equal, I would much prefer a temperate man to an intemperate one. Still, I do not make my vote depend absolutely upon the question of whether a candidate does or does not taste liquor. Here, Lincoln subtly acknowledges that Yates is a drinker. 
in the line other things being equal. Well, what other things would Lincoln be referring to? But what he is asking Oglesby to acknowledge is the fact that the issue here is not so much whether Yeats is in the habit of drinking secretly, which would make him a hypocrite, being associated with the temperance movement, but whether Lincoln wants Oglesby to see that whether a successful opposition to the Kansas-Nebraska Act can be politically mounted. And without Yates's high-profile congressional seat, anti-Nebraska forces would lose a major sounding board. Oglesby, who is Lincoln's political junior, needs to see that. And that's what Lincoln wants Oglesby to get. And additionally, Lincoln is not asking Oglesby to do anything he himself would be politically unable to do. So Lincoln continues. Other things being equal, well, excuse me, Lincoln continues. Thousands of thousands of us, in point of fact, have known Yates for more than 20 years. And as I have never seen him drink liquor, nor act, or speak, as if he had been drinking, nor smelled it on his breath, nor heard any man say he ever had, and as he has been twice elected to Congress without any such thing being discovered, I cannot but think such a charge as the above must be incorrect. Lincoln had never shared a drink with Yates, for Lincoln never drank. And he also believed that the temperance movement was successful because people made a rational decision that liquor was bad for them, or harmful. He didn't like the concept of a crusade against those who took up drink. And Lincoln points this out to Oglesby. That if Oglesby does not provide information on Yeats and his associations with liquor, he's not breaking from what is already widely known about Yeats. And this would also be in line with how Lincoln perceives uh, the importance of the temperance movement and how the temperance movement can be successful. So these are important things that Lincoln wants Oglesby to understand um, in how he approaches this issue on Yeats. Lincoln continues, or concludes, the letter. Will you please write me and tell me what the truth of the matter is? I will reciprocate at any time. Yours truly, A. Lincoln. Lincoln's use of the word truth stands out here. Lincoln probably knows the truth of the matter is that Yeats does drink. But what he is asking Oglesby to see is the heart of the matter, the heart of the political matter, which is the Kansas-Nebraska Act.